Good evening. I'm Meg Winch and welcome to my kitchen. I'm with Communication Resources Northwest and my friends at IIDA asked me to, to spend some time with you this evening to talk about interviewing well in a virtual environment. So lean forward, look into the camera and let's get started. I wanna start before the interview actually starts and provide for you five things that you can do to get ready for any interview. The first thing is something we all need to do, whether an interview is virtual or it's in person. And that is we need to do our homework. The more we know, the more effective we're going to be, whether it's a project interview or an interview for a job. That means learning as much as we can about the organization for which we're interviewing, knowing their portfolio, if possible, visiting some signature projects from a socially distance, distant way, and learning about the people you'll be interviewing with via LinkedIn or other sources. It's important to come prepared, able to ask your own good questions and communicate that you care and that you care enough to have gotten informed about the organization and the people. The second thing you wanna make sure that you do is anticipate the questions you might be getting asked. Now, this is easier when, than you think. And what it means is, all of us have at one time or another been engaged in some form of interview. We can think about all of the interview questions that we might have gotten in the past, or even better, we can role play. We can think about questions we might ask ourselves if we were the interviewer instead of the interviewee. Write those down, get comfortable with them. It's really not rocket science. There's a limited number of questions that you would be asked and most of the time people are very kind and they don't ask trick questions. So think about what they might be and then let's get ready for them. For these questions, think about what your value propositions might be. What have you got to offer the industry and the organization? What differentiates you from other people who might be interviewing for the same job? Is it the way you work? Is it the type of work that you do? Is it the way you think? Is it what you know? Think carefully about what value it is that you can offer to the prospective organization. And let's get comfortable selling that and talking about that. Instead of talking about all of your qualifications, talk about how those qualifications add value to the place you're interviewing and for the job you're interviewing for. And then let's outline some answers. Now, when I'm working for a client of mine trying to get ready for a shortlist interview, or when I'm coaching someone on a job interview, I do the same thing. I ask design professionals to draw the interview. And what that means is very much like how we might program a space, we would program an interview. In other words, we would create bubbles of content. We'd organize them into subsets and we'd find out what goes into each bubble and what is outside of each bubble. We take those bubbles of content and we put them in order or we put them side to side or adjacent to each other, but we shuffle that content until it looks right and it fits. So what we wind up having is a series of logical bubbles of content that we can then use to present. So if you get stuck in trying to figure out what the content might be for an interview or a content, the content might be for a presentation, try drawing it first and putting content into the bubbles and then organizing those bubbles until it makes sense. And then practice it out loud. It's this is probably the most important step. Giving a presentation, performing in an interview, it's a verbal activity that we have to speak orally so our ears can hear it orally and our body, the movement, can learn what it feels like to actually give a presentation or to perform an answer. Now, it's really important. I'm hoping that none of you script answers because you can tell when someone's scripted versus being conversational. And when we're interviewing people, we want them to be conversational because prospective employers want to understand what you really might be to work, work with and as someone that they'd enjoy working in the same organization with. And scripted people never show their best selves. 
So try this bubbling technique, this organizational technique, and then talk through it out loud until you get very comfortable. Now here's a tip. Sometimes when I'm nervous about a presentation or I'm trying to figure out what to say, or I want to practice just to make sure I'm ready for the next day or the next hour, I actually try to get outside and walk. I talk to myself as I walk. I throw myself the questions that I created in step two, and then I answer them as if I were answering the interviewer. And I try that over and over and over again. And there's something about the combination of fresh air, even if it's raining, as it does often in my hometown of Seattle, but that fresh air and that movement tends to make you more comfortable and you're able to try new things and it breaks through mental blocks. So try it. And if you're a little, little nervous about what you might look like talking to yourself as you walk down the, uh, the walking trail or the sidewalk, put an earbud in your ear and make it look like you're talking to someone and you're gesturing and you're, you're showing emotion and interest in everything that you say, but practice and practice out loud. So, now, once we're ready, it's time to show our best selves on camera. So to start, I'd like to focus on PLC, and that's not a typo. It actually means position or posture, lighting, and then centering yourself on screen. So let's start with position or posture. Posture is sitting up straight with your carriage erect which frees up your diaphragm and enables you to breathe easily in the interview or in the presentation. You don't wanna be leaning back, that pulls you too far away from the camera, and you don't wanna be leaning too far forward because that can look a little creepy too. So straight posture that is looking as if you're, you're ready to communicate and you're interested. Lighting. Make sure your lighting shows you in your best light, as it were, that illuminates your face. Now, a quick tip is to, if it's during the daytime, position yourself so you're looking out a window. That lovely natural light on your face is something that makes everybody look better. It's something I learned from a colleague who's a wedding photographer. If you aren't fortunate enough to have a window in front of you that you can look out, work on your lighting. Make sure you're working in a place that has nice, bright light. And if you need to, bring in lamps from around the house or the office to place behind the computer to cast light on your face. But another tip is be careful of the type of light and don't mix temperatures. What that mean, means is you don't want to take a lamp that has an incandescent bulb and mix it with a lamp with a fluorescent bulb and mix it with a halogen lamp. Those are different temperatures and it'll make you look modeled and not as good on camera as you might otherwise look. So stick with one light temperature, but make sure you get some of that nice natural and bright light onto your face. Now, when you are working under lights, it's also important to make sure that you're wearing a color that's a little bit brighter than you might normally wear. And if you happen to wear makeup, uh, no matter what your, your uh, uh, desire to wear makeup day to day is, it's generally a good uh, idea to put a little bit on to make sure you reduce glare and you get a little bit more vibrancy into your face. So practice and see how that looks. And then finally, centering yourself on screen. This is important because a lot of people don't like to look at themselves as they speak. And so you want to hide your self view, but before you do, make sure that you've got adequate space on top of your head and below your head in order so that you're adequately centered and look directly into the camera. You don't want to be looking down at your keyboard or out into space. It, for most of us, the camera on our screen is at the top of the screen and there's a little light right to the right or the left of it. If you focus on that, it looks as if you're looking right at the people across the, uh, the screen, and it's like sitting across a desk. If I actually look at the person on screen, chances are it can look like I'm looking down. So one tip that I often tell people to use is to draw a little stick figure on a sticky note and put it behind the camera and focus on the stick figure. And a little tip, if you need notes, put notes behind the camera, tape them to ba the back of your computer, you'll be able to see them, your audience can't see them, 
and you'll feel just a little bit more comfortable. But remember, don't read them. We don't want anyone to be scripted. We want the interviewer to see your true self. And so what about delivery skills then? So let's talk about delivering well and with confidence. There are three elements to delivery. One is how you look, one is how you sound, and the other is how you move. And again, that's not any different whether you're giving a, a presentation or an interview live or you're doing it on camera. It's just a little bit different in how we implement them in real time. So in terms of how we look, we want to make sure that we're wearing clothing that fits well and doesn't bind and is comfortable. We want to make sure that we're monitoring our posture all the time, that we're uh, being aware of how we're sitting and, and how we look on camera. And we're also making sure that we're controlling our lighting. Relative to how we sound, we want to make sure that we're managing our speed so that we're not speaking too quickly or too slowly. We want to most importantly manage our tone. Think about communicating warmth and what that looks like and what that sounds like. Make sure you're smiling because it's impossible to have a monotone while you're, when you're smiling. And think about trying through your voice to communicate how much you care about the position and how much you're enjoying speaking to the other person. Work on your enunciation. This is not the time to be sloppy with speech. We all tend to slur words. And remember, there's oftentimes a lot of things going on in the background for the people who are interviewing us. So slow down a bit and make sure that you enunciate so someone can understand what you're saying. And then focus on volume. You don't wanna to be too loud, but you also don't wanna to be too soft. You wanna make sure that you're projecting and focusing on making sure the other person can hear you. It's just a little bit louder than you might be if you were speaking really across the table. And then finally, how you move. Now, in reality, we're not moving around the room like we might in a normal uh, interview, nor are we doing all of the things that we might do if we were live. But the reality is we're still moving. Even though we're sitting in a chair or standing at a, at a standing desk, we are moving with our eyes. We're looking into the camera. We're not having a fixed stare, but we're making it more natural. Our facial expressions are telling a story and we're smiling. And yes, you can still gesture. You just have to gesture somewhat higher. So how you look, how you sound, and how you move have a profound impact on how you come across. Here's the really good news. All of this is 100% learned behavior. What that means is there isn't anyone born knowing how to communicate better than someone else or knowing how to present better or interview better. It just takes practice. You can't wait till the night before the interview and you can't wait to practice when you're actually giving the interview or being interviewed over the, over the, the virtual environment by Zoom or Teams or WebEx. You have to practice that early. So instead of waiting till then to sit up straight, to look in the camera, to smile, to work on your lighting, what if we did it all the time? If like me, you have a Zoom meeting with your family every Sunday, let's fix the lighting for that. Let's work on our posture and practice with the people who love us the most. Let's have those meetings with our colleagues and make sure we're practicing great Zoom behavior, that we're giving it our full attention, that we're not doing anything else or checking email, we're looking into the camera, we're smiling and we're practicing PLC. You can do this. This is an uncertain time in our world and it's an uncertain time in our industry. And I know that many of you are looking for new jobs or even looking for your first job. Practice, practice, practice and ask those of us who've been around a while for help. We're here for you. You are joining an incredible industry full of people who care about you, care about design, and want you to succeed. So I wish you the very best of luck, and I wish you the best next job and the most successful interview. Thank you.